Hey everybody, uh, this is the second part for our Unit 6 IM2 test coming up on Modules 14 and 15. I'll probably spend at least a couple of days in class going over this. Let's go ahead and finish it up here. So it says Z is the circumcenter. Now if I could, this is not drawn to scale, but if I could, um, the circumcenter is the, the circle that goes around the outside of uh, the triangle. So if I could make a circle, and I tried it earlier, it misses it just a little bit. So it's not exactly the circumcenter. But if it is the circumcenter, then whatever the radius is, and I'm just going to fudge it just a little bit. Whoops, let's move it in just a little bit. So whatever that radius is, it's supposed to hit all of the vertices. It got those guys, but it just missed that guy right there. Anyways, I want you to know there's the circumcenter. There's the circumcircle of the of the of uh, the, the circle that goes around and hits all the vertices and if I could these would all be radii and they're all congruent so that radius right there would equal so that 8 it's 8 it's going to equal that radius right there it's also going to equal that radius right there all right and we get um, this this center piece right here whoops we don't need to do that we get this center piece which is right here by drawing the perpendicular bisectors okay so see how that's a right angle perpendicular that's a right angle perpendicular and so this side equals this side because they bisect okay this side equals this side so this would be six and six right there all these red guys would be eight and this 30 right here would bisect it so that would have to be 15 and 15 all right let's see what they're asking here so so um, all the radii are congruent right there so um, the directions are saying find the length of ZC so ZC is that 8 right there okay and then AC well, where's AC okay so AC uh, here's here's a and then here's C down here so if this is 6 this is 6 and so the whole length is is 12 right there okay so that's what I'm gonna do right there so um, we get 12 on that guy now it's not asking for it you guys but I could certainly figure out um, um, uh, this length right uh, or could I I could figure out this length by doing the Pythagorean theorem if I said that's X X squared plus 6 squared equals 8 squared I can figure out that length and I think that's all I can do on that um, uh, no, I could figure out this length also because this is 15 right there. So if we let, uh, see, this is not drawn to scale right there. So I don't see how that can be 30 right there. Anyways, that's the numbers I was given right there. All right, so here it says um, uh, find BC. Okay, so right here, you guys, these are called angle bisectors because this angle equals this. So this ray right here is an angle bisector right here and as long as we have right angles right here then this distance from this point to here is is this segment right here and if it's on the angle bisector then this segment must equal this segment right here as long as we have those those right angles right there okay so so if we set those equal to each other and it says find the length of BC so we're gonna find Y first and then we're gonna plug in Y equals 11 right there so 44 plus 6 is going to get me 50, I'm sorry, we'll plug it in right here. Here's BC, so we'll get 50 in both cases. But anyways, 6 times 11 is 66. 66 minus 16 gets me that 50 right there, okay? So BC is equal to 50. So is BD. BD is also 50 right there. Okay, here TJ and SJ are angle bisectors, okay? So if we could do this, you guys, if this is an angle bisector, then this angle here equals this angle. And similarly, this angle here equals this angle here. Okay, so it says first find find um, uh, angle bisectors of RST. Golly, I'm making mistakes like crazy. There should be an R right here. If not a triangle ST. You can't have a triangle with two letters. So uh, RST. Anyways, um, as you're going to see ST in the next couple of slides uh, right there. Okay, this is I still say ST. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this angle right here. This is 14 right here. So if we plugged in that 14 right there, Oh, sorry. Let's see. I forgot to do something. So this says find the distance from J to R S. Okay. So, so if are these are angle bisectors. So if I could, I can draw a circle inside right there. Uh, it would be called the incircle. 
Okay, and so the in circle where the angle bisectors uh, intersect gives us the in center of the in circle that is inscribed in that triangle. I, di I didn't check to see how drawn to scale this one was, but let's let's see how much it is to scale. So uh, if I put that right there, and then if I close this compass up. So it would just go right there. It would get me a nice in circle. So this will be close enough right there. So let's see. So there's the circle that's supposed to hit all the sides. And this, this is not drawn to scale. So I'm going to take that out of there. But if it is the in center, you guys, our textbook that we have, I don't know about you, but it's the same textbook we have. Um, it's it, they got a lot of stuff that's, that's not drawn to scale, a lot of mistakes, as you guys know. All right, but whatever this distance is right here, it's the same as this distance right here. So 8.37, it would be the same as that distance right here, 8.37. So this distance is equal to the distance from J to RS, 8.37. All right, now they want us to find uh, RTJ, angle RTJ. So I'm going to go ahead and put that other 14 in right there because it's an angle bisector. And then it gives us this triangle right here. When I put those two 14s together right there, 14 and 14 is 28. And I took out the rest of this stuff. So I can just focus on this triangle, 180 for this triangle. We can get that angle right there from taking it away from 180. And I get 110 degrees. Now remember, this ray or this segment right here is the angle bisector of this 110. Okay, so each one of these little pieces must be 55. So what's this angle? It's 55 degrees right there. Okay, all right, so here we got a, a groovy proof. I know you guys love proofs. All my students, they just clap and they just laugh and giggle when a proof comes up, just like you do. Huh. All right, so free points, you guys. Now this one, they're giving you a bunch of information. So they're giving you all that stuff. We just got to fill it in. Okay, so let's go fill it in. It says VX. Okay, so here's VX right here. It's perpendicular to this ray. So I put a little right angle right there. And VZ is perpendicular to this ray. So there's a right angle right there. Let's also go mark some stuff right here. So it says VX is equal to VZ. Okay, so this side is equal to this side. So let's at least mark that right there. Okay, there's some free points, by the way. So on proofs, if you don't know anything, you at least know that the first uh, statement and reason is the given information. And so all of that was written right there. And I don't know why yet, but... Uh, I do know that this is my proof statement that goes down here. All right, let's go mark stuff. Okay, I'm going to mark all the congruencies. Oh, yeah, right here. Sorry, here's some more free points. Anything equals itself by the reflexive property. So just cruising through YV equals YV or segment YV is congruent to segment YV. All right, now we're going to mark everything. I'm going to mark these segments equal. I'm going to mark these guys equal. So here it is right there. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, some more free points right here, you guys. you got congruent triangles. Always, 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 always. The next reason is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's this guy. All right, now i got them all marked. It says right here, VX is equal to VZ. So this side is equal to this side. And then this right here, the reflexive property, YV equals itself right here. Now, do you see uh, uh, these right angles right here? So they're right angles because we got perpendicular lines. So I'm just going to say perpendicular lines makes those right angles right there. Okay, now let's look at the markings right here. Okay, I got a right triangle right here. I got a right triangle right here. So the markings uh, indicate, okay, this is the hypotenuse and this is the leg. It's called the HL theorem. There's no angle side side. And the joke is don't make an angle side side of yourself. But this is angle side side. Only if it's a right triangle, you can only do that. And they say they save it by saying the, the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle equaling the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle. Then these triangles are congruent. Okay, and then, uh, so now, uh, remember, if we've got an angle bisector right here, here's a ray that's bisecting the angle, so X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. The statement before that says that angle X, Y, V, which is this angle right here, equals this angle, Z, Y, W right there. Let's mark those right there, okay? And then, so, well, if those are equal, then it has to be an angle bisector, so it has to bisect it. Definition of an angle bisector right there. 
All right, let's try another one here. All right, so here we have a parallelogram. Find each measure. Okay, so I got some opposite sides. I'm going to find y first and say this side equals this side. Opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. So, so here I'm going to go ahead and, and um, uh, subtract y. So y, take it away from 3y is 2y. Now we're going to get rid of this minus 1 by going plus 1 plus 1. 15 plus 1 is, is 16. So 2y equals 16. So y equals 8. Okay, then plug in 8 for AB. So I'm going to just plug in 8 right there. 8 plus 15, AB is going to be 23. Okay, let's find X. Okay, so here these are opposite angles of a parallelogram. So I'm going to set these guys equal to each other because that's one of our properties of parallelograms is opposite, opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so now I'm going to go uh, take away 9X from 10X and get 1X and go plus 19, plus 19, negative 5, plus 19 is 14. All right, so now we can find angle D by plugging in 14 right here. 10 times 14 is 140. 140 minus uh, uh, 19 is going to get me 121 degrees, okay? All right, so that means uh, since um, uh, this is 121, so is this. This is 121 because opposite angles are congruent. All right, and the other thing is this, you guys. Consecutive angles or next two angles, they are supplementary. So if this is 121, then this must be the supplement of 121, which is uh, 59 degrees. And so is angle C. Opposite angles are also 59 degrees right there. Okay, almost done, you guys. Okay, so determine the best qualification for each polygon below. Answers may include a quadrilateral or a parallelogram or a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square. Okay, so the properties of... of um, uh, quadrilaterals just means they have four sides. So these are both quadrilaterals, okay? All right, now they have some more things here, you guys. So let's go ahead and mark it X, Y. So I'm going to mark uh, a tick mark here and a tick mark here. And then I'm also going to mark um, uh, the arrows, the parallel sides right there, okay? And then the other thing I'm going to mark is uh, the diagonals are perpendicular. So W, Y, here's W, Y is uh, perpendicular to... X, Z, so there's a right angle right here. Okay, these markings are, makes it a parallelogram. So the parallelograms are, um, uh, let's see, uh, if if uh, we got to one pair of opposite sides, see how the top and bottom are both congruent and they're both parallel at the same time, that's one of the reasons we can say it's a parallelogram. And since the diagonals make a right angle, the only time it makes a right angle is if it's a rhombus or a square. Okay, I don't know it's a square because I don't know if that's a right angle right there. It would be a square if there was some sort of right angle right there. Or if we knew that the diagonals were congruent also, then it would be a rectangle, which uh, we know it's a rhombus, but we don't know it's a rectangle, so it's definitely a rhombus. If it was a rectangle and a rhombus, it would be a square. All right, let's go mark these guys over here, okay? So... So X, Y, the top is congruent to the bottom. And then it says um, uh, V, W. Oh, there's a typo. I forgot. There's a typo. And it's just, it should say X, W on there. It's an X, W. So, so it's on the paper. It says V, W. I remember that. So I'll, I'll, I'll email that to you. But it's also, it, it should be X, W. So this side is congruent to this side right there. That right there tells me parallelogram. Since I got both pairs of opposite sides congruent. Okay, and then this guy right here says that WY, which is this diagonal, is congruent to this diagonal. Well, the only time the diagonals are congruent is if it's a rectangle or a square. Okay, I don't know it's a square because I don't know about if that's a right angle right there. This is a different problem over here. Even though it's the same picture, it's a different problem. So I don't know that the diagonals are perpendicular, but I do know that, that the diagonals are congruent because that's what this statement says. So this guy's going to be a, a rectangle right there, okay? All right, you guys, sorry, I went a little bit too fast. So, hey, good luck on your test, you guys. Let me know how you do. Take care.